Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, these are very, very first types of uh, recordings, so uh, if there's anything that's a little bit unsure, that's because this is all very new to me and hopefully very new to you as well. Um, what you've seen so far on some of my tutorials have been uh, early stage of surfacing. What I thought may be really useful is for us to go through right from the beginning, right through to a workable part. And I am a massive nerd, which uh, some of you may have noticed on um, my channel so far. But what I like to do is I like to uh, rebuild things, remake things, because the good thing is, is if I go out and buy something, I can get the dimensions. A real challenge for modeling is, what if I go out and buy something, and um, or what if I go and play a game or a video game and kind of go, I have no dimensions. How the hell am I going to get started? There's loads of little tips and tricks that we can use to allow us to be able to rebuild, remake, or even have functional working parts. So the helmets behind me um, are fully functioning uh, examples of stuff that uh, I've done with colleagues in the past. So what I thought might be quite good is for us to go all the way through um, a part. Now, a great one um, a lot of people tend to use is a technique called base part. One of the tutorials that's already on here goes into a bit of description of that. There's a few flips and tricks that I'm going to introduce to this. I thought a great start towards um, this moving forwards is perhaps Laura Croft's Ice Axe. And um, a lot of people will shoot me down for promoting anything type of weaponry. So what I'll do is I'm just promoting this as a rebuild from the video game. Um, this is just a very uh, rough uh, sketch and what I've done, I did not complete this, so do check in the description, I will give you the link to find this. This is going to be our base layer to get moving. What I'm going to do first is, um, I think I'm going to start with the head, the blade, and then look at where, and start to look at where the points interconnect. This is not going to be one session. This, in my mind, to go from surface to solid to assembly to finish part, it's probably going to be about four or five sessions. So do stay tuned to um, that process. If I do anything in these uh, examples, please do uh, write as many comments as you like. If there is anything in particular where you kind of go, I've done it this way, let me know. Uh, I'm always up to learn um, uh, different ways, different techniques to doing things better. So I am open for that completely. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is use this as a sketch part. And um, I'm using SolidWorks, using SolidWorks, SolidWorks 2022. Um, even though we are moving on to 2023 at the moment, I've not had a chance to review any new changes on the new system. But again, this is purely staying with our surfacing. Um, so let's go. First things first, uh, let's go for a straight part. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine base part, I'm going to combine surfacing, I'm going to combine assemblies, I'm going to combine some subdivisions and derivatives. And as we're going through these tutorial sessions, I'll take you through exactly what we're doing, why, why we're doing it. So one big issue is when you actually have something, how in the hell do you know how big something is? What I'm going to do is give myself a base, uh, a base value to operate with. This then allows me to do, have a scalable sized piece to tell me how big something's going to be. So what I'll do first is I'm going to go, and again, I'm only picking this just, just through sheer default. I'm going from the front plane, and then I'm going to go start. So from here now, this is going to be my reference drawing, my reference sketch to tell me how big something is. So I'm going, um, in this case, I think... And I don't quote me on that, so don't shoot me in the comments. But I think that the average length of an ice axe to this, because, I mean, every time we see it in Tomb Raider, she seems to wear the axe against her hip, and then the blade is similar to, is almost at her knee. So we can guess around 45, maybe 50 uh, centimetres, which is 500 millimetres. Quite a big piece. I mean, they, these things are not tiny. These are quite big, uh, uh, and I said weapons. These are quite uh, big tools. So what I'll do for argument's sake, let's go 500. This now sets me to 500 millimeters and I have 50 centimeters to operate with. This is now my base reference. 
So I'm going to rename this. Uh, I am really fickety in this. The other thing I am going to do in these sessions is I'm going to do a lot of overbuilding. But do not hide your overbuilds. Sloppy, sloppy technique. Don't hide, don't hide your overbuilds. You want to tidy them up, get rid of them. Any sessions that I've run in class, always tidy them up, get rid of them. Don't pretend they don't exist because I believe me, you take it out of here, you take in some type of answers, so you want to do something else, put process with it, it will find your mistakes. So just get rid of it from the start. So let's go. Um, I'm just going to give this my reference, ref uh, sketch. So let's just give me my ref sketch. Then I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to go sketch, sketch. I'm going to go tools, sketch tools, sketch picture. Again, this image that I'm about to use, I will have uh, uploaded. Well, I'll actually put it on. I'll put the link on the description just so you guys can follow wherever you want to. So I'm going to scroll that right down. And what I'm doing here is I, I get this a lot. I, I mean, uh, those of you who've done uh, sketch pictures before, People use it and they make it so like crazy reference of it's got to be 100%. And you kind of go, well, I mean, you know, get it as close as you can. And whatever your measurement's going to be, make sure that it's it's something, you know, useful. So that gives me from tip to, uh, uh, let's go a little bit bigger, perhaps just a tad bigger. Let's go something like uh Whoops, not that much. Uh, something like, I mean, you see, I'm doing it now. I am doing it now. Uh, this is just to give me a reference of how big this is. So, again, if this is going right to a hip, it's going to be around this area. So, I don't have to go too crazy. But what this now allows me to do is have a rough idea of how big this would be. Now, I personally um, don't like to have these of 100%. If you like that, yeah, please do stay with that. Stay with what works well for you. But for me, in this case, I'm going to go. I'll probably go 50%. Uh, let's go something less. Let's just go. Uh, let's just put you about there. Well, I'll, I'll stay at that particular point there. Okay. So if I just confirm that, and and if I now just come out of here, and what I'll now do is just rename this as a sketch picture. So if I rename this as sketch, oops, sketch pick or ref, whatever I want to. So now that gives me key reference for operating with. And what I'll do is select here and here and then turn that into a folder. This is like a ref folder. But it just means I can track back that easier because, well, as we're moving along, this is going to get more and more and more in depth. What I'm going to do for this first particular one is I'll probably start. I mean, look at it, look at the actual overall structure. Let's start at the base down here. So you see where we actually have this point here. If I come to here and we'll get partly to the handle and then start extracting all important key parts from this. So first things first, let's let's get the handle piece together. So I'm going to go new sketch. Now, a big thing that people do, and people do this all the time, is they will um, sketch on a sketch picture. Now, let me quickly show you why this is really, really, really poor process. So I'm going to edit sketch onto here. Now, let me just, this will only take me a moment, but if I just come into here, and then let's just say I'm going to trace this sketch here like that. Then if I come off, come off the actual sketch. Now, let's say I've now sketched my piece round and I, I don't need the sketch anymore. So I'm just going to hide that. Oh, oh no, I've lost my drawing. Oh, yeah, I don't know. It's, oh, what, what? So rather than causing yourself agony and believe me, I've seen students in my, my years of teaching, I've seen students get themselves into a lot of sticky scenarios. Just don't do it. For that extra sketch, it is just it's not worth it's not worth the aggro to go with it. So I'd always promote. Now you will go to some companies or you will go to some places and they don't mind that. Um I would say that little bit extra poses no threat and it gives you that extra little bit more of efficiency and it just gets you standing in a better stead. So what I'll do from now is I'm gonna go in and I'm now gonna bring in um uh, my sketch 
Now, if, uh, a few ways to do this. What I'll do first, now I'm a, I'm a really, I really do prefer to try and use a three point arc, but if we can't use a three point arc, then what we'll do is we'll go to a spline. Now a single spline to this point here and here. Well, I'll probably go one U to U as well. Right. Now, a lot of people look to the spline, they kind of go, it's, it's aggro, is it really worth it? Uh, it is. It's, it's useful, it is very useful, but what we'll do is, you'll see these leading arcs here. Now these arms are your best friend when it comes to the spline. If you're looking to ensure that you, you uh, retain a, 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 a tangent behavior of something, these arms are insane. They're so useful for what you need to do. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna tip this out as well, bring it out to there. Now, what you'll see now is just me redefining like that. Now, again, all I did is click on the actual spline, and you'll see these ones here have not actually been activated. They're, the reason they're not activated is because I've not engaged them. Uh, but you'll see here that these are both engaged here, and it is so incredibly useful. So all I'm doing at this point now is starting to extract the all-important processes that I'm going to need. Um, what I'll do next is I'm, I'm just going to do the same thing again, actually. Bring that to there. And I mean, uh, let me just try a three point arc. Now, the one thing I should say is for this video, I have not practiced. This is me doing it off the cuff. So, uh, stuff is going to go wrong. If it doesn't go wrong, I, I, I will be surprised, I'll be very, very surprised. So, bring it up to here, right. Ah, now look at that. Now look at that. You see, this is what I was just saying about the, the spline. You look there and you look there, you go, oh my God, oh my giddy on, what is that? So if I bring that in, bring that around a little bit. Now all I'm doing is just engaging these arms. And if you're not used to splines, do have a play with the weight in gold. So good. Now the good thing is, is you should be starting to be aware of that. I've used someone's sketch. And really, when you zoom out, is the sketch that good? Not really, but it's a hell of a good reference and it gives us that all important starting point. Now that's why I wasn't really too bothered about having a super, super detailed piece. So all I'm doing at the moment uh, is just tracing this and I'm using these all important arms. Um, if you've not done yet, do have a go with these. And I thought this uh, this session to, well, these next set of tutorials will be quite useful because we can build these up. Um, we can build up the uh, axe itself. So let me bring this in and I'll just confirm. Right, so you see there, uh, we're back again. It's a very simple thing. Both points disengage. I click onto the arm. I'm gonna engage the arm there. And I'm gonna do the same here, bringing that round. Now that tangent behavior still resigns, re, uh, uh, still, still retains, sorry, which is fab. So it's given us that all input spiky pro, profile that we're looking for in this um, key piece. Now, obviously, this piece here is slightly different. So I'm just going to hate to say this, fudge it, which um, doesn't sound right at all. But I'm just going to uh, just fudge that in like that. But what you're starting to see is if I zoom it down, you start to see that it's actually it's 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 actually not that fudged. It's actually looking pretty good. I'm quite pleased with that. And again, just a single spline with one marker on it. You you will get many people who go point 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 point, and they go point insane, insane. We don't want to do that. We just now we want to try and uh, build this out piece by piece. Now, as I said before, we are going to do some overbuilding. When we do that overbuilding, we're going to deal with our overbuilds. We are not just going to ignore it. So um, you'll see here what I've got. What I've got here is a sketch there. Now, a um, student once said to me, "Why are you actually just tracing the whole thing?" Because as a JPEG, it's it's a JPEG. As a sketch. It is something for me to work with. And that is essentially at this point what we're doing. We're just building something here for us to build a sketch, for us to work with what we can. Now you see there, three point arc, where you can, they're quite useful. They are useful. 
Uh, the thing is with a spline is they are a little bit frickety. You, you, you're fiddling, you're trying to get it right. And it's a bit of a pain in the backside. So what I'm going to do here is build these up piece by piece. Oh, not like that. You see there where I was bringing that arc in, you could see it wasn't going to quite meet the point. So that tells me I put in um, a spline. And I'm going to bring that arc round, tip it over here. And again, this just gives me that freedom to move around splines. Uh, I mean, I know in my tutorials that, I've got, that you've got so far, you will find quite a few splines that I've already done. I mean, uh, apologies, you'll find a few times when I've used splines. And that is purely because they are, they're extremely useful. So let's see if I can actually get that to follow. See there? I've got a little bit brave now. <laughs> Maybe too brave, but let's find out. Uh, bring that in. Uh, let's top you around a little bit. Tilt you out. Uh, you see there? Starting to get that flow. It's all about the flow. And I'm uh, going to get that in there. And there you go. Uh, they are not too happy with you. See that? I see that. Just it just loses it. Um, hmm. I may come back to that. So again, it, this does not need to be painful. Does not need to be painful. And as I said in my other tutorials, we've gone through different techniques and we've gone through different tools. Well, as I said, what I thought might be pretty cool is if we do something with an actual uh, application to it. So in this case, we're doing something nerdy. This is the Lara Croft uh, Ice Axe, which we will go from surface to um, solid and then to assembly. And if you are an owner of a 3D printer, which nowadays everyone is, um, you will be able to use this to um, build yourself uh, the parts okay you see that and I, I was a little bit brave there a little bit brave but you see that it's gone off scale a little bit there so I'll just bring that around just because I can and uh, it's not bad I mean if I'm honest my other tutorial on the grip was a little bit better on there and that's one way that you could uh, publish this or, or at least publicize this moving forwards um, and again this now moves up and I'm going all the way up to the top all the way up to the next section up to here like that you see that click on here and then I mean well I mean it's actually oh oh look at that that was almost being being laser yeah there we go so <clears throat> again bring this round and uh, 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 what this will do is it will just give us the all important references that we need to be able to create something which is pretty cool and again it's um, only because we just needed a reference to do this this will work for anybody who's doing parts for uh, let me think if you're doing uh, uh, if you're into bike riding uh, if you're into uh, mountain biking parts like this are easily recreated so parts from images pictures there is ways of using the exact same technique of what i've just done to uh, establish a size for this there is ways to do the same thing for um oh, once again for uh, images of bicycle parts however i don't want to i don't want to start copying directly in such a way so what I'm going to do is just bring this up and bring this up to here like that. There we go. So take it to here. And again, I'm just playing just to bring in a bit more in like that. And now what you're starting to see is these pieces. Now, personally, for me, I always but always um, like to start to try and build these parts. But um, I need a master sketch first. And that is what we're using here. When we move in and we start um, to move forwards, uh, we will use this master sketch to allow us to do some incredibly cool stuff. So again, this is not the full tutorial. I'm going to do this in smaller pieces so you guys can uh, learn a few extra new techniques, things like that. So this is really focused on, as you should realize by now, 
the uh, benefit of splines and how we can use splines to our advantage. So um, do stay tuned and each week I will release uh, an update to this set of, um, I don't know, I, I normally know these as notes, so uh, I will uh, release some information on the latest advancement on the set of um, uh, videos. Right, so it's not perfect and if I'm honest, we're probably going to revisit that arc. That is nasty. That is nasty. Oh, my goodness. That is not one of my favorites at all. However, it is referenced to the sketch. So I'm not going to change things yet because I'm just not convinced. And we are ju we're, we're, we're almost guessing as we're going along. And this is where um, those of you who are esteemed engineers already, you'll know that you, you need some security of, of kind of going right. Okay, that should be okay. Now that luckily is a three point arc. I ju I literally, as I said, I have not practiced this, and I thought what might be quite nice by not practicing this is by we um, kind of learn these techniques together, if you know what I mean. Um, now look, see there, that is evidential to not being a three point arc. So I'm not going to force that. I am now going into, you guessed it, the all-important spline. Give me a spline. So um, bring it into there. And what I'll do is just take it to this edge. I, I'm, I'm probably going to hold it at that point um, and engage the end point on the actual uh, arc. So you see here, bring that down a little bit. And um, where that uh, anchor is here as well, I'm just going to tip that over as two. Oh, 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 that is so close. Oh, that is so close. It's painful. Um, I'm, I'm going to leave it. I, I'm going to leave it. You know, I am. I'm going to leave it. I can feel the judgment coming through the internet as we speak but i am i'm gonna leave i'm gonna leave it on that uh that point there i'm gonna turn that to a three point arc ow now ow 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 can you see that look at that now when you move to doing um well when we move to creating this into a three-dimensional structure that there is going to cause me problems that is literally because this arc comes down and does not have a tangential behavior between these two. So when I flow across it, I won't get a, a nice little hump. I'll get line hump. And what we need to be able to do is create a nice tangential behavior there. So I'll go both points here and then let's just bring in a tangent. Now, it's, it's fine. No, it's not. That's just me like lying straight out, right? So what it did there is it pushed out the spline, and then the spline's gone. Mm, uh, no, I, I, you know what? No, I've decided, and it's a no. So what we've now got to do is I've now got to activate the rest of these points to make sure that this has given me something that's actually quite useful. So this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. And uh, you do end up, I mean, I, over the years, I, I have found myself chasing the edges, chasing that point, getting that perfection in it. Um, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of guys on YouTube. And, um, yeah, I, I think I can relate to a lot, a lot of guys on YouTube. You kind of go, yeah, you know, I, I totally get why you're doing that. Just because... Um, yeah, you do. You just chase that edge, like that edge there. And I've got this nasty point here. So I'm going to need to try and make this as smooth as possible. But um, I don't think that's going to allow me. That's going to have to be something I'm going to, I'm going to visit in a moment. So one thing I could do, and I have done in the past before, is use a fillet. So the fillet now, if I go here and here, see that? that it just trims that edge. And that gives me a little bit more of a nicer interface. And that should remove that nasty, um, that, that, that bump to bump, you know? Um, but we've got to find out. Uh, if you've never done 
sketching, if you've never done uh, 3D, if you've never done this type of thing before, one thing that you will learn and you will always learn is sketches. The best sketches lead to the best parts. Um, the amount of people I've seen draw things and then they will, they'll almost chisel out the shape that they're after by doing lots and lots and lots of fillets. And honestly, it is a waste of time. Too many fillets, you end up with a nasty looking piece and any post processing uh, for the analysis side, it, it gets it gets brutal. And you just look and go, no. So what you really want to try and do is keep everything as smooth and as consistent as possible, which is what I'm at. Oh, 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 I see that. What I'm trying to do there. Oh, that's a nasty one. Look at that. See that there? That should be more linear. I'm going to pull it off. Do not like that. Okay, so I'll try something else now. Uh, and again, this is me chasing that edge, just wanting that perfection. Now, this is these are quite brutal points now. So I'm I'm actually not too worried about um, creating pieces here which look quite linear, because evidental to the image that we've got here, it is quite. Um, there we go. Oh, oh, it is quite rudimental right there. So we look, ah, there we go. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm partly happy, partly happy. Not perfectly happy, but we'll, you know, take it step by step here. So I'm going to go point to here and then across to the um, upper point on there. Now, see up there. Do try to make sure that you retain your connections. Ooh, why are you not playing ball? In fact, where's my trim? I'm just going to trim that back. I just want that to be trimmed, just so it's it just so it interfaces and it's consistent across. That's all. Okay. Okay, so we're almost now at a position where we we kind of know where everything's going to be. There's these inputs, these these dents, these these cutouts. But what we'll do is use this as a master sketch, and then um, it becomes a it becomes really good. It becomes so much fun because we can extract surfaces left, right, and center, and it starts to really look like the uh, part that we're after. So um, let me bring. I've got a three point art. This three point art brings it into this edge here. And what I'll do is go uh, spline and let's go. It may be more than this, but we'll just go with these for the minute. See, a spline with two anchors can often be everything that you need. So you end up with lots of people who do like 20, 30 key marks points. And you go, you just don't need all that. And it's only just because, I think it's more experience of, yeah, that works, that doesn't. But I would always recommend you just don't need all them key marker points, what um, a lot of people do add. So, yeah, do try to uh, just see what you can do with two points. Uh, like, I mean, with one point, sorry. So I've got my uh, start in the end and one point in the middle. And look at what I got there. Perfect. If I don't mind saying so myself. Right. Uh, another thing that you can do is, if you look here, I'm going to uh, just judge this. So if I just go to about there. I just want to show you something. So if I come to here, um, a friend of mine did this recently, and it was like, yeah, that's cool. That is very, very cool. I like that. Um, if I can make this work. Oh, you know, I was hoping that... I'm See, it's me again, chasing that edge. So I'm just going to do uh, an entities. So I'll go entities. I'm going to extend entities. Let's just extend that. And um, right, so if I now go to trim, power trim that bad boy back, and I'll go fill it. You and you. Oh, not 10. So let's go five. Wow. Two and a half. Two and a half. Wow, what? One? 
Oh, definitely not one. Uh, 1 1.5. Here we go. Am I just like... Let's try it again. If... <laughs> Let's just go uh, 2.3. Uh, hang on a minute, 2.5. My God, that actually works. Right, so you see there, that's another way of having to of chasing that edge. So you get that nice, smooth transition of where the handle interfaces with the blade. Uh, it just depends on how you'd like to do it. But that's another way of doing it if you are um, uh, ever curious on that edge. Uh, so let's have a look. Mm, see there? I've lost it there and I lose it there. So let's go spline, you, to you, to you. And then we bring that in. Kind of like that. And then um, come to here and here. And... You know, we just look and you go, is that really right? I'm not all. Oh, ooh, look at that. That's, oh, that's, that is shocking. Shocking. Come on now. What's, what is happening? So if I'm just going to bring that in, just um, see if we can change that out a little bit. No, I don't like that. Bring that back. I do not like that. That's a poor, poor effort. Um, I'll tell you, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a mini spline here. Mini spline! So then, now, a, a few won't know this. Uh, I've had students, I didn't know this, uh, obviously I was a student, but I didn't know this too. So if you look at where I, I grabbed the marker, I'm going to press control, I'm going to select the other point as well. Now that's where the marker, you see that? Tangent. So now what it does is it actually creates the tangent relationship between the end marker and the former spline. Kind of does part of the job. It's, it's fab, it's a fab tool. So I'll do the same thing here, bring that tangent. Now, you kind of look and go, it's got unresolved. Yes, we know. So um, it's just because of this one here, and I'm going to uh, just in case that. Oh, 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 my giddy aunt, that's gone not quite right. Oh, so I was getting overconfident there, evidently. So let's bring that in and then uh, push that back. Whoops. It's not working for me. Oh, you know what? I don't even like that. Uh, let's bring that out a little bit. And then, um, got to be able to get that edge. You know, you just want an edge to just look the part. Look the part. Ah, oh, you know what? That's actually not bad. Let's try you. Tilt you out a little bit like that. Bring you down a little bit like that. That's not bad. Um, we may revisit that. You know, when we move to us, um, converting this to a solid piece, go you to you, and then let's see if we can create a tangent behavior. Yeah, 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 you know what? Maybe I was just trying to force too much on that edge. Yeah, I've lost that edge bit, but I, I do prefer that. I do prefer that. So you look now, we've now uh, almost got the uh, constructed piece. And what I'm going to do now is start to just trace around the blade. And then we have our master sketch. And if we've not done already, we are definitely going to start saving. Just because um, it, it, it can take its time. Oh. So what I'll now do is bring this across. And, and I'm just going to... Uh, it's going to be linear. I think that's linear. It is linear. That's also linear. Um, yeah, it's all very linear at that point. Uh, let's go you. Um, uh, yeah, you see here, if I activate a spline, I'm going to spline this across because I do think something like this it's been specifically made to be uh, almost jagged. Um, the teeth, we're going to find out because I, I, I do. Th if I do specifically remember that these teeth are um, ice teeth, they're almost digging. 
So we'll see with that. Good thing is, if we don't like it, let's change it. But we need to get to that uh, initial first point. So again, just to be using my markers, pulling that in, and then we're just going to um, stop that out there like that, something like that. You see how we're getting that, that profile? And um, what I'd like to do moving forwards is we're probably going to get even more references to the, uh, the Lara Croft uh, axe just because uh, we just need to be sure of how it's presented. Do you see there? Just give me an initial spot. Oh, oh, I, I mean, I, oh, I can't stay with that. Look at that. That's that's awful. Yeah, I, that bit I'm going to revisit. We're going to have to revisit just because I'm, it's just not, it, it, it's not exactly what we're after. And again, there's no reason why we can't even change the blade as we're going in. Because this blade just, I don't know, it doesn't rain home for me. I mean, I've played the game many times, but uh, it doesn't rain home for me. So uh, I'm just going to try it out, really. I, I'm not convinced as of yet. So let's just pop that out to there, like that. And on to there. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. And then on to there, like that. And then I will trim you right back. Like that. There we go. There we go. Okay. So, um, we'll move that forward. And um, now what we'll do is we're just going to complete this, this sketch. So if you've not done already, um, complete that off. I'm just going to go through the rest. Um, um, but yeah, just, just move this on and let's just get this blade uh, completed. Um, bring that down a little, bring a little bit like that and bring you down here like that, something like that. Uh, I, I really do think we're going to revisit this blade. I'm just not convinced. And um, there to there and to there. That's the one. That's the one. You can see there. I'm, probably whoever originally drew this was drawing this uh, in that type of action. So it's, you can almost see where they change direction based on how the spline behaves. Um, a lot of people will be telling me all oh, the shortcuts as well to recreate in an action. I get that. So I can go right click and uh, recent tools and do it that way. But I don't mind just clicking on the top of the screen. We <laughs> um, see there, it is starting to take that shape. Um, this isn't that much too long now. Once we have that, we we actually once we actually have the oh, once we have this completed. This is so big because we've got so much of this section done. Uh, what I would like to do moving forward on a lot of these tutorials is we are going to recreate um, uh, almost cosplay pieces. So from um, uh, the Mandalorian helmet through to Lara Croft equipment through to Cyberpunk, which any of you eagle-eyed people will see in the background from me. You'll see... Um, the trauma team helmet and because it's just a lot of fun and to be able to make this type of stuff and it sees see stuff come to life is insanely cool uh, so things like that and also obviously my uh, area in, in my, my professional area is in uh, exoskeletons so things like that as well will also appear in these tutorials so bits of humans, bits of fun, you know, just lots of fun. So um, now given how this has been drawn, I'm just going to three point art right now. I mean, look at that. Could that sketch be any more uh, easy? Oh, 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 well, you know what? I mean, oh, I was, I was having so much fun there. I thought it was going to be perfect. You know what? Spoiled it. 
<laughs> so I'm going to bring that in and pop that down and bring that session there across there, that point there across to there, and just tap it down a little bit like that. And again, I, I, I can't spend too much time chasing the edge because the other thing to remember is this drawing is a basic drawing that was uh, that's been provided of the axe. So my point is, is even though we're going to have um, a, a 3D representation of what this drawing is, we're going to have to update it. We're going to have to make it a bit more relevant because um, the actual axe, from what I remember, um, does have a lot more profile than what we're seeing here. So this is just to give us, if you will, the baseline. If you are a student from my class, you will... Um, see a benefit from this just because this is the type of assignment work that I expect to see. Um, not exactly a nerdy part, but something which um, is, is quite tricky and not straightforward to construct. Right, so, and again, I'm taking a long time with this and I want to do a good job of this axe in particular. And let's face it, it's a lot better than doing something boring like a, I don't know, like a jug. And if I can promote some good techniques, such as uh, if you're going to overbuild, removing your overbuilds. God, the amount of time I've seen people build who overbuild, and then they will just leave the builds in there. Um, if you go, if you are familiar with GrabCAD, um, yeah, there is quite a few examples of overbuilding going on in there. I'm not saying it's like too much doom and gloom. What I'm just saying is that um, it does affect the ability of a nice, clean drawing. So um, you do want to try and do away with that as much as possible. Um, or if you are going to overbuild, just tidy up after yourself. That's all you've got to do. Get rid of some of it. And um, if need be, go back to it when needed. So... There we go. See there. Again, these. This has been done. This, the way that this has been drawn. If this has been drawn digitally, this is definitely uh, somebody's definitely used a, a continuous splines to represent the blade teeth on the axe. Okay, so we're nearly there. We are nearly there at our main uh, base line of material. So the only thing I do need to do now is I need to do some of the internals and then we've got our master sketch. Again, uh, do keep in mind that any time you're doing sketches, any time you're producing master sketches, always put everything into one sketch. This is, as I said, this is uh, uh, nicknamed the master sketch, I should say. And uh, I'm sure somebody will let me know it, it's actually not a nickname, it's a formal name. So, um, these cutouts, I'm not too fussed with these cutouts because I've seen various versions of this and these cutouts do not exist. However, these cutouts do exist. These are hook points. So, uh, I know for sure that that is going to be vital. Now, I am eyeballing this position. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I had no idea that was going to happen. That, was, that, that worked out pretty well. Quite impressed with myself. So I got to here. And then I'm going to put on the bolt. And again, it's just polygon. Right. A lot of things I've seen done before. So first things first, taking some entities. Let's copy these entities first. And I'm going to copy, uh, oops, not that. I'm going to copy it from here and put on, on uh, here. And then uh, I'm going to do the same thing again. Copy entity there. And I'm going to go there to there. Okay, so now. You may um, be in a position now, you kind of go, yeah, but it's not quite the sketch, is it? That's right, it's not quite the sketch. So we're going to change that. So I'm going to rotate that. And I'm probably just going to go two degrees. Oh, so three. 
<laughs> got two degrees. Let's have a look at two degrees. Um, let's go negative four. Oh, negative four even. Negative five. Eight. It's a little better. I'll go like that. <clears throat> and again, rotating the entities coming across to here. And I'm just going to click on, and uh, we're going to do the same again. So let's rotate that. And let's just go uh, negative two. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to ensure that this and this and this are all the same. I'm going to press control, circle, circle, and circle. And uh, where are my constraints? Where are my constraints come down? So what you to you. Oh, but we're a copy, aren't we? So we may change. So let's just check. Oh, no, hang on. No, we won't. So here and here. So I've got these selected. See there, I've got equal. Make them equal. Now, as I change one, everything else should change with it. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Here and here, I'm going to make that equal. And what I'd like to do finally is that. Oh, in fact, see my internal construction lines here, here, and here. Make them equal. And here and here, make them equal. Now we're just going to experiment. So let's just come in and how big is that? Ah, 5.1. So it's an M5. Ah, there you go. So let's say it's going to be bigger. Let's go six. Ah, see that? Consistent change, consistent update. So we've now, we're now starting to look. Dare I say, we're now starting to look pretty cool. And uh, we've now got that overall control piece there. Interestingly, that circle and that mount point here, I'm willing to guess, are very similar in size. So let's just jump in. Let's just check it. Go circle onto that center point here. Bring that out. And let's have a look. How big is that? What? So I've got 5.1, 5.1. Oh, it's actually not. Oh, look, look at me. Yeah, well, I'm glad. You, I'm, <laughs> so it's not. <laughs> so it's not the actual size. Um, this, uh, what looks to be some type of sunken um, uh, bolt. Uh, yep. Yeah. So I'm just curious now. No, none of them are the same size. No, okay, okay. Well, at least we checked. They're definitely not the same size. And uh, finally, what I'd like to now do is start to bring in uh, an, an ellipse. So I'm going to attempt to just give myself a center point roughly here. Mm. That's out. Now, I, the, the many years I've spent doing this and kind of looking, yeah, this becomes quite an obsession, believe me. That's not bad. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate this from the angle. Let's go. All I'm just doing now is just, I'm almost dragging this into shape. Mm. Mm. We may revisit that. I mean, because you see there, I've trimmed the top edge off there. Ugh, I mean, these are nasty. I mean, these are meant to be slots. If I remember rightly, they are um, slot points on the um, the axe itself. I mean, that is nasty. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So what I'll do is I'm just going to come on to my upper point here and see if I can... Oh, I'll go um, here... 
because what this is looking for is it's looking for my um, middle of where my slot's going to be. So I'm going to go there. And now let's go roughly here. I'm actually preferring mine. And not because I'm being uh, arrogant, but you've got to look. You do, I mean, looking at the sketch now in, in a bit more of a clear, focused eye, you do look and go, yeah, it's a little bit clumsy. I shouldn't say clumsy. It's a good sketch, but it's been drawn freehand. It's a better description. The um, the process on here is a little bit more freehand. And, um, yeah, it's uh, I, I didn't realise. But it's a great one for us to learn from. So I'm going to bring it out here and then um, let's have a look. Can I bring you onto here? So, um, yeah, I mean, mm, I'll bring it out a little bit more to here like that. Um, let's just tab that out. Whoops, not that there. And finally, there is this cutout here. This cutout, actually, I think is a hole. It isn't, because I think these are configuration holes. Um, but again, we're going to put it there, because I do think it is significant to the actual design itself. So we're going to put that there. And then I'm going to, uh, let's just go line and put that there to there. Uh, to there, right. So the cutout here I'll, again. I'm not convinced that's there. So I, I, we're going to need to find some more reference pieces. Uh, in the description, I'll add more things into it, but uh, just for you to get an idea. Um, the blade point here is good. So let's have a bit of fun. So what I'm going to do is now exit this. I'm going to. Um, Click on, and then I'm going to rename this. Now, a, a technique, left click, wait, left click. I'm going to rename. So that automatically goes rename. Uh, so a friend of mine told me that. It's very cool. So I'm just going to call this Master Sketch. And now I'm going to hide all this lot. So all these in here, these are actually now pointless. So let's just hide that. Arguably, should that go in the folder? You know what? Maybe it should go in the folder. I'm going to left click, drop it in. So now we've got our axe. So let's have a bit of fun with this. Um, in the future, uh, I just want to see this first, but in the future, what I'd like to do is I would like to um, turn this into many different pieces. But let's just start with the blade. Does the blade look like what we want it to be? And uh, we are going to revisit this. And in a moment, I'm going to close this tutorial just on this piece. And then we're going to pick up from this point moving on. So I'm going to click on sketch. So now the reason I've done this is I'm actually now using convert entities. I don't do any sketching anymore. I just click what I want. I want that. I want that. I want that. I want that. That. Uh, no. uh, in fact, that, that, that. Can I select chain? Is that going to let me? There we go. So that's the chain straight onto there. I want that. And um, I'm going to actually take that and that and that. Oh, that. And I think that's it. That's all I need. So this internal bit here, I'm going to trim out. I just want to see how this is going to look. So let's confirm that. Wait for it. And then we come out of here. And what I'll do is I'm just going to hide my master sketch. And I'm going to come back to, um, I'm just going to call that blade, even though I'm going to end up deleting this. And I'm going to right click and go to edit. So this, I don't need it, don't need it. In fact, in fact, no, 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 no. I'm just going backwards. 
this point here, 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 and here, I'm going to turn to construction. Gives me reference. I can see where the uh, 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 where the handle is. And in fact, arguably, what I should have perhaps have done is taken some of the handle to give me construction points. So in fact, you know what? Let's take it. Why not? So I'll go convert. And I'm going to come to this edge like that. And just click OK. Go back to my master and turn it off. However, this point now here to here to here to here is all for construction. Oh, this is so cool. So cool. I, I love doing this type of stuff. So what we'll do is we're going to presume that this axe has been manufactured. Uh, something like that. And again, we're going to change it moving on. But this allows us to just look at, does this work? Is this going to be something useful? Or is it going to be a total disaster? Uh, I think this is going to be something useful, but that's just me just being a little bit overconfident. <laughs> um, you see there, I'm trying to trace that line. I'm going to go spline. Uh, I'll use a three-point spline. Uh, get rid of you. Uh, three-point spline to here and here and then here. And I don't mind with that. So um, let's just confirm that. And uh, whoops, you see this down here. Now, when we're about to move into a sketch and I'm not into the actual uh, parts in a moment, that's going to cause problems. So what we need to do is come back and we need to make, whoops, <laughs> we need to make sure that everything that we're using is uh, construction, whatever is construction is not going to be part of what we're doing. So uh, let's go here. Let's go to here. And I'm just converting them from a solid uh, geometry line to construction. Or else the system is going to go, no, uh, what are you doing? Don't be silly. So I'm going to go you yeah, to there. And I'm going to turn that into construction. Now, for those of you who are uh, inventor users, you will know that this is this is quite common. So in, in Inventor, where you can right click and you can split lines, it's fab, really, really good. Now there is things you can do in here. So I'm going to go Sketch Tools, Split Entities. What I'd like to do now is snap a split right there. Uh, just. Uh, oh yes right so this now you see there if we go there to there i'm going to merge them two points so now what i should have is two separate lines these two now have allowed me to break in two uh a student came to me and said um, why can i not split Inventor's so much better yada 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 and don't get me wrong inventor's very good uh, i do both and uh, inventor is very good but SolidWorks, for its uh, approachability, it's so good. It's just so much fun. So all I've done there is split entity. Great tool if you've not used it before. This is just so I can have, I can start to look at the overall piece. Okay, so let's just look early doors. Um, we'll come out of here. This is our blade. So I'm going to create a planar surface. A uh, planar surface just needs everything flat on a plate. If it is flat on a plate, if I click it, what it will do, oh, in fact, you know what? It, it might, let's see if it'll work. Ah, now, the reason it's referring to in this case is there is uh, all the construction lines. Remember we were talking about construction lines earlier and the problems it can cause, this is what it's referring to. So it's okay, it's okay. So what I'll do is I'll use a filled. Oh, I wonder if that's even gonna work, but that's not gonna work. Okay, so I have a boundary somewhere. Oh my giddy hand. Oh, hang on. Well, okay, so I'm in fact, I'm going to just trim these out as well because I'm not convinced that they're doing me any favors. 
Okay, and I'll get rid of you. Uh, so by trimming these back as well, it will also allow me to see if there's anything that I've missed. Because I'm saying this 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 is more than likely me missing something somewhere. So let's just take a look. Because you see there where it's not closing. Let's try and um, I'll go surface. Let's just do an extruded surface. So we see there we've got an extruded surface. Okay, so that's now uh, giving me what I'm after. So what I'll do for my blade, I think my blade, uh, we will check this, but this is just to give me to see if this is going to work. I'm going to go five millimeters and I'm going to go mid, uh, mid plane. I always like to go mid plane. So I'm modeling from the middle of my geometry. Click OK. And there we go. Just hide that for the minute. And then let's uh, close this off with a nice, uh, ah, look, boom, there it is, swine, ah. I'm glad we could find it, so let me just go back to edit, so it's coming, for, uh, oh, look at that, oh, that nearly, that nearly drove me around the bend, apologies, it did, so I'm just going to right click, I'm going to go to Tools, I'm going to go Split Entities, and I'm coming in now to split my point here. It says HG you want to. Of course I do, I just said I wanted to. So, I'm going to press Control on my point, on my geometry, merge that little puppy together. Now what we've got is Construction, and then Profile. So let's remove that Construction there, and there we go. That's what it wasn't happy with. So if I now come out of here, and I'm just going to delete the extrusion, click OK, and let's turn that back on, and I'm just going to do a planar surface on here. There we go. There we go. So you look now, we've got that planar piece, and um, there's a few things I can do here. So with my planar now, uh, I could turn that back. Oh, it's actually still on, so we'll do an extrusion of that sketch. And uh, we do that mid plane. Oh, that's really clumsy of me. Really clumsy. In fact, I actually think playing a surface in this case was a bad idea. So let's just do an extrusion. We'll get this looking something sensible. And then um, we'll draw a line. So I'm just going to do a planar surface above. Three, two, one. And then beneath. Turn my sketch off for the moment. And if I now go to my knit surface, I'm just going to bring this together. And uh, let's just merge my entities, create, oh, I won't create a solid, but let's merge the entities. And because it merged, it's now created that piece. So it's the early days and we're far from completed yet. However, this is now fully controlled and fully dictated by our master sketch. When we move forwards, what we're going to do is we're going to move to the next piece. And on the next piece after then, um, what we will do is we will start to go to the next phase. But for now, if you've not done already, do make sure that you hit save. I don't know, call it blade, call it whatever you want to call it. Um, um, what I'll do is I'm just going to call mine. I'll call mine a uh, Croft Axe or something like that. I'll call this um, uh, Croft uh, Tomb Raider Axe. Tomb Raider Axe. So I'll call that Tomb Raider Axe. And then that is that. So I'm going to hit save. And right. So uh, I hope that you all found that really useful. I hope that you, um, you found that first sign of first start of this uh, was really uh, insightful. Splines, getting a good sketch working, getting everything really, really tip top. It, it's all about a good sketch. Once you have a good sketch, the rest of it is so easy. Other than that, 
Uh, do tune in for next week, as next week we will go to the next phase of building the actual profiles up. We've done the hard work now. We've got a sketch working. It's looking tip top. It's looking great. Um, so, yeah, do tune in for next week. We will start building this up, and then we'll start getting a real part working. Other than that, have a great day, everyone.